Welcome back to the Pale on this board. Noboru Uchida of Japan, the fists of iron. Now to take on Alexei Gnishov, the legs of steel from Belarus in quarterfinal number one of the European Grand Prix. This one should be a corker. Alexei Gnishov, the favourite in this side of the draw, Mike Ango, but carrying a major injury on his right knee. Well, there you can see it as he comes out to his usual Russian violin music. But the Red Scorpion has major damage to that knee. He shouldn't really be fighting, in my opinion. His right knee has a posterior cruciate ligament tear. And his left knee, in actual fact, has a lot of cartilage floating, floating free in the knee. He didn't want to let his fans down here in Europe. And I suspect there was a bit of contractual pressure applied as well to get him here. He is in good shape, stamina-wise, Alexei Glashov. But as far as the physicality of that knee and the damage, well, I'd be surprised if he's anywhere even over the 50% mark. Taking on Noboru Uchida. They call him the hands of steel, but uh, I don't know, Mike. In my opinion, Uchida doesn't really hit that hard and shouldn't be able to phase Ignashov with many of his punches. Well, Ignashov's never been seen to be dropped by punches in his entire career. So I doubt that Uchida is really going to make an impact. Uchida's best advantage, in actual fact, is to throw multiple volleys of combinations and then cut down low with the legs. Uchida coming off a decision win over Canada's Mike McDonald last November on the Titans show in Japan. Meanwhile, Ignashov coming off a decision loss over five rounds to the Chief Peter Graham at the Trust Stadium in Waitakere at the Battle of the Anzacs only a month or so ago. Of course, Ignashov won this event here in Paris. What was it in 2003? With his wins over Pavel Meyer, Alexander Ustinov and Cyril Abidi that night. Didn't fight in the event last year, and he's back here in 2005 to see if he can regain his crown as a European Grand Prix champion. Three by three, K1 modified rules do apply. No knees permitted, and here we go. Quarter final number one. Immediately we see Ignashov doubling up on the jab, and I expect him to almost be exclusive with the hands to the hands tonight. He is not a very good boxer, in my opinion. That is certainly not his strength. It's always been the knees and the kicks, and there we see Crippy right hand. Left hook. Nice turn here. Good turning left hook there from the big scorpion, Alexei Ignashov. Uchida just backed off momentarily, snaps out the jab as Ignashov. And the big Belarusians opened up like a house on fire. Here in the first round, this is exactly what we wanted to see. Well, he's looking like Francois Botha in there with his hands. Here was me saying he's not great with his hands, and he really went to work. Overhand right there, clipping and whopping the back of Uchida's ear. Look at the size difference between the Well, them. a 12 centimetre height advantage to Ignashov and a 22 kilo weight advantage to the 27 year old versus the 30 year old Uchida. And so far, Iggy has owned him for the opening part of this round. Outside thigh kick from Uchida. What has this Japanese fighter got up his sleeve against an experienced campaigner in Alexei Ignashov? Well, I think Uchida's best chance is to take it into the second and third round. That's why we would have seen Ignashov starting off strong with the hands. He really doesn't want to be in here. He knows he's got a knee injury. He just wants to knock this guy and get him out of there. Will Uchida be a callous fighter? Will he go after that rear knee of Alexei Ignashov? We don't know what's going through Uchida's mind. A man, of course, who took a two-year break from the sport in 2002-2003, only returned to the circuit last year and had a mixed bag with three wins in four fights with Cheetah. And same too for Alexei Ignashov having a real mixed bag in 2004 with seven wins and two losses and that crucial loss against Cowfly that kept him out of the Grand Prix final last December. But doing well so far in the opening round against Uchida, just getting his distance with that jab, takes an outside thigh kick to the lead leg there and Uchida circling off to his left, working the outside of the ring as Ignashov controls centre ring. And again, Ignashov almost exclusively with the hands. He did throw a couple of tentative probing kicks with the left leg. And Uchida countering back well. Ignashov relaxing. Wild left hook. Ignashov relaxing too long. And Uchida is starting to get confidence. Outside thigh kick from Uchida. Used to fight as a super middleweight. I remember him fighting Paul the Hurricane Briggs back in December 99. He lost by a fourth round knockout. Leaping left hook there from Uchida, outside thigh kick from the Japanese fighter. Ignashov digs away to the right rib cage, the floating ribs of the Japanese fighter. 
English shoppers slowed down markedly now after an explosive start to the round. Of course, you've got to remember, English shop has not been able to do any road work at all, and he hasn't been able to check with his legs. I know that for a fact from having been in the gym with him. And so his conditioning will also be way down. End of the first round. I've got to give it a 10 9 to English shop just for the sheer aggression that he began the round with, Mike. Yeah, I'd probably score that one a draw. I thought a cheetah did a lot more work, particularly later in the round, which generally catches the judge's attention, particularly with the low kicks and coming up as combinations with kicks. And here we go in the replay. Ignashoff throwing a rear kick with the left leg. And there we see the low kicks coming down off the left hook by Ishida. And he's starting to get confidence. And Alexei Ignashoff just relaxing too much against the fighter who's expected to dominate. And if you do that, sometimes the worm can turn. Okay, we are ready to roll round number two of three. The voice Michael Chevallo, Lightning Mike Angove. Hope you're enjoying the action of the K1 European Grand Prix. Still to come, folks, that big grudge match. You don't want to miss it. Abidi versus Labana later on. It should be a corker as Uchida doubles up with the outside thigh kicks to the lead leg of Ignashov. Interestingly, Uchida hasn't gone after the rear leg. And just as I say it, Mike, what does he do? Kicks out the back leg of Ignashov. Thanks, Nabori. <laughs> he moved around well at that stage, starting just to, to use the jab to find his range and working that left low kick well. And this is a very confident Noboru Uchida here in the second stanza. Inside fight kick, nicely done. Ignashov is not kicking at all, Mike, and you can see the, the damage that he must be carrying on that rear leg. It's usually one of his power weapons. The rear leg round kicks the lead thigh of the opponent, but he's hardly thrown it so far. Well, he hasn't thrown a single right leg kick through that fight. You can see there he really wanted to throw something, but he pulled back from it. He really is favouring that leg badly. A little push kick there from Ignashov just to find his range, to keep him at his range. Jab outside thigh kick. Thought about the turning back kick follow-up to Uchida. Uchida, of course, comes from a karate background, so he'll be very, very proficient with the low kicks, as are most of the Kyokushin and Sato Kaikan fighters. The winner of this fight, of course, goes on to meet either the Iron Leg, Nufal Benazuz, or the very classy Aziz Katsu. Who will make it through to the semi-finals? Ignashov wades out with that long-reaching right hand of his but he has really slowed down here in the second round. For those of you who are wondering why Ignashov isn't using his jab, which, is, which he should really be using to more effect, it's because he's tentative on the front leg, and Uchida is targeting his front leg. There you saw it again, smashing the leg down low, which makes Alexei Ignashov not feeling very comfortable about throwing the jab. Ignashov just takes the lead leg out of contention, tries for an inside thigh kick of his own. But this is all one-way traffic, I'm afraid, to Noboru Uchida. And the former K1 European champion, Ignashov, really has to step it up if he wants to win back his crown. Balk dummy right hand there from Uchida. The technique made famous, of course, by Slam and Sam Greco when he put it on a Kiwi in Melbourne back in 1994 on Simon Sweet, Mike. There's one from the memory banks. Well, Simon Sweet's had to live that one down ever since. Oh, he right hand. Right, nicely done from Ignashov. Side of the jaw. He wants to juke it out with Uchida. Tags him again with a two threatening left hand. Straight right at the centre. Digs to the body. I actually think that should have been called an eight count. His gloves touched the ground there, which no. technically is an eight count. I disagree. It was only a slip though, Mike. It was a slip caused by a rather large right hand, Mike. Okay, hopefully we'll see that one on the replay, but we'll agree to disagree as we go into the final seconds. Ignashov does have the upper hand when he's in close and boxing with the power shots. As we say again, with a straight right up the centre corridor. And there's the end of round two. Did Iggy do enough to pull it back, Mike? Well, I would probably give that round to Ignashov on the strength that it was the only really definitive shots in the round. He really did hurt Uchida badly, not only with the right hand, but with follow-up left hooks and another right hand also. Well, we're going to disagree again because I'm giving that one a drawn round 10 all. <laughs> And there is the big right hand clipping him. Glove went to the ground. Technically, under K1 rules, can be ruled an eight count. 
And following up, doubling up on the left hand, driving him back with the right hand, and the corner screaming desperately to a cheetah to keep his guard up. As we roll into round number three, unofficially, we've got it 19-19, a draw after two rounds. So it is really still anyone's for the taking. Can Ignashov unload those hands? I feel if he can get that right hand on the jaw of a cheetah, he may just drop the challenge. to move. Feel the balls of his feet and simply outpoint Ignashov because he's not going to knock him out with his hands. Well, you can see a cheater immediately going to the legs there. That's his game plan and he should just stick to it. Stay on the outside and whack the legs. Good cheater trying to size up the distance with that jab, then flicked up the high right round kick. The Mawashi Getty off the rear leg. Jab from Ignashov evades the round kick off the lead leg from a cheater. Walks into a front kick, there's a cheater. Comes forward again, inside thigh kick, and Ignashov won't like that one. Almost clipped the groin cut. I think they went rather close to the knee there. And Ignashov, quite often, you, know, you notice when fighters are hurt, as often they will acknowledge the, will acknowledge the shot or smile as if it didn't really hurt. That one was close to the knee, and I think Ignashov felt it. I think he smiled, Mike, because it hit him in the groin. But, again, may be wrong. He picked the groin shot earlier on. I always say something strange about my ability that I always manage to call the groin shots. Well, mate, you can't make an entire career on calling groin shots. Stranger things have happened as a cheetah cracks away, relentless into that lead thigh, just tenderizing the quadricep and hamstring area of Alexei Nishov. And Noboru, a cheetah, have a look. He's got more kick than a drowning mule here in the third round and continues to unload just above that left knee of the Belarusian. Ignashov is spent, Mike. Yeah, he's very tired. He's really only throwing the right-hand body shot. He should be going upstairs to the head with the, the left hook. He should be throwing in multiple combinations because that's really his best defense at the moment is to keep a cheetah on the back foot and not allow him the momentum to start kicking while he's going forward. Well, Cheetah talking to himself, psyching himself on. He knows that he is on top of the podium at the moment as long as he doesn't make any silly mistakes. Outside thigh kick again to the lead leg. There it is once more, a little higher up around the waist region. Uchida completely owning, signed the ownership papers on the lead leg of Ignashov because Uchida is taking it. Well, he's certainly well ahead in this fight and in this round. I just... Oh, oh, right hand. Noburu Uchida going for the big bop toy with the right hand. And even Ignashov says, yep, you got me with that one, son. No, no, I mean, there's an indication of the guy's power, though, Ignashov sort of applauding him for just hitting him, but not really not even acknowledging that the guy has any sting on his shot. Outside thigh kick with Cheetah. Where's the front kick? Trying to put the belly button through the back. Jab two there from Ignashov. Takes another outside thigh kick. Just evades the overhand right. And we're into the dying seconds. And Alex Ignashov, you need to rip out a knockdown. Oh, straight right hand. Ignashov may be looking for the big kibosh here in the dying stages. Goes for another Right. He's missing with the left hook. He's throwing the right hand and it's finding a target, but he needs the follow-up shot. Ignashov cannot just throw the right hands. He needs the hook for the uppercut. And he hasn't won that fight. End of the third and final round. And Mike, I'm giving the final round to a cheater. So are you. And I dare say it's another disappointing loss for the badly injured Alexei Ignashov. Well, if the rumours are true and he has been... Uh, let me say, let me say, ask to fight. I really think it's a poor decision by K1 because they're not allowing their fighter to recover and perform at his best. And this guy is a commodity. They need to look after him. But the sheer heart on Alexei Ignashov taking this fight in Paris, the former K1 European champion, and what a warrior's heart just to step in here with such a badly damaged okay. knee. À l'unanimité des juges, Noboru Ushida! Oh, there you have it! And is he the happiest man in the world at the moment? Noboru Ushida is through to semi-final number one of the K1 European Grand Prix, and he has done it by claiming a major scalp in the form of Alexei Mishon. And folks, when we return to the Palais on the Sport in Paris, it's quarter-final number two of this awesome event between Benazouz and Gatou.